Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the course of the step-by-step -step solutions to the exercises for the textbook Microeconomics Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition by Professor Jeffrey Pilaf. It is Moon Festival today. Let me wish you a wonderful Moon Festival with your family and loved ones. May the wrong moon bring you happiness, peace, and prosperity. Today, we will solve the problems for Section 3.4, Constrained Consumer Choice. Here is Exercise 4.1. Suppose that Boston consumers pay twice as much for avocados as they pay for tangerines whereas San Diego consumers pay half as much for avocados as they pay for tangerines. Assuming that consumers maximize their utility, which city's consumers have a higher marginal rate of substitution of avocados for tangerines if tangerines are on the horizontal axis? Explain your answer. In the first step, we draw budget lines to help us solve the problem. The budget line for Boston consumers is deeper than that for San Diego consumers. The slope of the budget line is the marginal rate of transformation, the rate at which the consumers can trade avocados for tangerines in the market. For Boston consumers, it is minus 2. For San Diego consumers, it is minus 1 over 2. Tangerines are much less expensive in San Diego. In the second step, we find the marginal rate of substitution. We assume that consumers maximize their utility. In other words, Consumers are at the optimal bundles, so the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation, which means Boston's consumers' marginal rate of substitution is minus 2, and San Diego consumers' marginal rate of substitution is minus 1 over 2. Boston consumers have a higher marginal rate of substitution of avocados for tangerines than San Diego consumers. The former are willing to give up two avocados for one more tangerine, while the latter wants to exchange one avocado for two tangerines. Let's do exercise 4.2. Elise consumes cans of anchovies, Q1, and boxes of biscuits, Q2. Each of her indifference curves reflects straightly diminishing marginal rates of substitution, where Q1 equals 2 and Q2 equals 2. Her marginal rate of substitution between cans of anchovies and boxes of biscuits equals minus 1. Will she prefer a bundle with three cans of anchovies and a box of biscuits to a bundle with two of each? Why? In the first step, we draw the indifference curve. At point A, her bundle is two of each good. At this point, the marginal rate of substitution is minus 1, which means she is willing to exchange one unit of biscuits for one unit of anchovies. In the second step, we consider what happens when we move along this indifference curve downward and to the right. When we move to point B, where there were three units of anchovies, how many units of biscuits will she have? 
because of the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. The marginal rate of substitution becomes smaller in absolute value. So when we move to the point where there were three units of anchovies, there should be more than one unit of biscuits. That is, she is willing to give up less than one unit of biscuits for one more unit of anchovies when she has fewer biscuits. So the bundle with three cans of anchovies and a box of biscuits must be in a lower indifference curve. In other words, she will prefer a bundle with two of each. This conclusion is based on a usual convex to the origin shape of the indifference curve. Let's solve exercise 4.3. Andy purchases only two goods, Apple Q1 and Comquits Q2. He has an income of $40 and can buy apples at $2 per pound and kumquats at $4 per pound. His utility function is as follows. What is his marginal utility for apples and what is his marginal utility for kumquats? What bundle of apples and kumquats should he purchase to maximize his utility? Why? This question is about the corner solutions because the utility function is linear. We compare the marginal utility from the last dollar spent on the two goods. In the first step, we calculate the marginal utility of each good. In the second step, we calculate the marginal utility from the last dollar spent on each good and compare them. We find that Andy gets more extra utility from the last dollar spent on apples than he gets from corn cuts. So he spends his entire income on apples. The optimal bundle is to purchase 20 pounds of apples and zero corn cuts. We can draw the indifference curves and the budget line to check the answer. We find that the indifference curves are steeper than the budget line. By the highest indifference curves rule, Andy's optimal bundle is E because it is on the highest indifference curve that touches the budget constraint. At this point, Andy spends or his income on apples. The cookies and books. At his current consumption bundle, his marginal utility from books is 10 and from cookies is 5. Each book costs $10 and each cookie costs $2. Is he maximizing his utility? Explain. If he's not, how can he increase his utility while keeping his total expenditure constant? We can examine whether he maximizes his utility by comparing the marginal utilities of the last dollar spent on the two goods. MU1 over P1 is his marginal utility from the last dollar spent on books. It is one utile. MU2 over P2 is his marginal utility from the last dollar on cookies. It is 2.5 utiles. The latter is greater than the former, implying that he's not maximizing his utility. The last dollar on cookies gives him more happiness than the last dollar on books. He can increase his utility by spending more on cookies and less on books. Let's consider exercise 
some of the largest import tariffs, the tax on imported goods, are on shoes. Strangely, the cheaper the shoes, the higher the tariff. The highest U.S. tariff, sixty-seven percent, is on a pair of three-dollar Canvas sneakers, while the tariff on twelve-dollar sneakers is thirty-seven percent, and that on three hundred dollar Italian leather imports is twelve percent. Laura buys either inexpensive Canvas sneakers or more expensive. Gym shoes for her many children. Use an indifference curve budget line analysis to show how imposing these unequal tariffs affects the bundle of shoes that she buys compared to what she would have bought in the absence of tariffs. Can you confidently predict? Whether she will buy relatively more expensive gym shoes after the tariff, why or why not? Suppose Laura spends why on the two types of shoes. In the first step, we find the budget constraint before the tariff. We have price one and price two, so the budget constraint has a slope of. Minus zero point two five. In the second step, we find the budget constraint after the tariff. The new budget line has a slope of minus zero point three zero five. It is steeper than the budget line before the tariff. In the third step. We connect the budget constraints with the indifference curves. At the optimal bundles of the two types of shoes, the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. That is, the marginal rate of substitution equals the slope of the budget constraint, or the price ratio. So, the marginal rate of substitution is larger. After the tax, if Laura's indifference curve has the usual convex to the origin shape, then she must buy relatively more expensive shoes. The reason is that a larger marginal rate of substitution on the indifference curve corresponds to a bundle with relatively more Q2 and less Q1. By the diminishing marginal rate of substitution, as shown in the graph, she might purchase less of both expensive and inexpensive shoes because of the increase in the prices of both goods. But she would buy relatively more expensive shoes. Thank you so much for solving the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow. For the remaining problems, goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.